Hello and welcome to the Advent of Automation, your personal 20-day guide to streamlining your BI workflow. This is day 17 of our learning journey and today we are going to learn how and why we should reconnect parallel branches in Power Automate. Parallel branches allow us to run multiple actions at the same time instead of one after the other. But at some stage and in some flows, you might want those parallel lines to meet sooner than infinity. With that said, let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of data, analytics and automation. If this is your first time around here, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons so you won't miss any of my tutorials. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Today, I would like to show you how easy it is to reconnect parallel running actions with a simple click, or maybe three. And to show you why this reconnection could be useful at some point in automation. To demo it, I'm going to build on the learnings from day 16, where we generated insights using a GPT prompt. With that, let's head over to my machine. Now we are looking at our Power BI AI Insight automation. Just a quick recap of what this flow does. It queries a large volume of data from a Power BI semantic model, then creates a CSV table of the output of that query, which is then used in a create text with GPT action. Lastly, we have an approval step as it's a must after a GPT text creation. Essentially, we use AI to auto-generate some insights based on our expectations from a data set. Let's say that our data is too big and would exceed what we can query. See the limitations on the screen right now. Using this example, let's say that we would like to bring in more details, not just the channel name, customer name and product groups with sales data for any given month. It's highly likely that we would go above the 1 million value per query limit. So what can we do? Easy, just add a parallel branch and run another query against the data set. This way we can split the queries into a customer specific query and a product specific query. It's always a good practice to rename the actions from the default names. Right now these names are not really helpful, so let me do that quickly. One is going to be called customer query and the other one is product query. Now we have the two queries running side by side. This way we can query even larger volumes of data. Let's add the same create CSV table action after the product query as well. Also rename both of these create CSV table steps. Perfect. Now all we need to do is add the CSV table to our prompt at the AI builder step, right? Well, test it out. I need to edit the prompt to allow me to feed in another text input. Let's call it product input. With that, save the new prompt and add another dynamic content field. Well, it looks like I cannot reference or use dynamic content from the other branch, which is not surprising as they run parallel. At this stage, the GPT text creation action has no idea what's going on on the right hand side of the flow. And this is exactly where we can reconnect the two sides, which will allow us and the GPT action to reference both CSV tables. To reconnect the two sides at this stage, all we need to do is head over to the settings for the action and under the run after section, add a new action, namely the product CSV table creation. And look at that. Now our two branches have become one, again. And now I can head back to the parameters and reference the product CSV table. It also means that I don't need to run two approvals and once we get to the point of having a GPT text summary generated, I can just reference that in an email or a Teams chat. This is great. But wait, there are more options to explore. If we expand both of the CSV table actions, I have the option to pick when I want to run the GPT text creation. And just like with any other actions, I can select successful, timed out, skipped, or failed outcomes. 
This gives us even more flexibility with some more complex business automations where the interaction between the two or multiple branches that we run parallel might be a bit trickier. And yes, I can very easily add a third query running against the Power BI semantic model and after the CSV table creation step, base the GPT text generation on three queries. Just like this. Isn't it fantastic that after 16 days of learning, we have now created a very complex flow based on multiple criteria or business logic. Not only that, but we did all of this using the user interface of Power Automate. Not a single line of code was written. The good thing about reconnecting parallel branches is that you can do that at any stage. Let's say that my prompt would take more tokens than what the GPT API can handle. Then I can easily run three parallel prompt creations and connect them in the approval stage for a final commentary about different SaaS related summaries. A quick piece of advice before we wrap up. Please note that these actions run in parallel. Duh! Which means that we don't really have control over execution steps. The reason why I find this important to flag is that if you split certain actions into multiple branches, you might face some difficulties with multiple actions trying to access the same output. For example, trying to add rows to an Excel spreadsheet might result in a failure as both branches might try to add values to a row number 10. Or creating files on SharePoint with a timestamp might result in files being overwritten from one branch to another. So always be cautious about these pitfalls and plan ahead before creating multiple branches. Overall, splitting actions into multiple branches and then reconnecting them before the final step, or wherever it makes sense, can help streamline the flow and optimize performance by reducing how long a flow might run. It's especially useful for managing throttling limitation when a large volume of data might be used in a single API call. With those calls being smaller, we can save time and make our flows more reliable. And with that, we've covered everything for this demo. I hope you enjoyed this series and by the end of December, or whenever you complete the learning, you will have some great automation ideas to enhance your BI workflow. If you have any questions or comments, Drop them in the comment section below and I do my best to answer them quickly. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, check out these tutorials to take your data, analytics and automation journey to the next level. Until the next one, see ya!